Hello friends and welcome to a totally different shop. I will have a video of shop moving and all that jazz, uh, but the most important part and I, the thing that most people are requesting is a video on my new lathe. So this is my lathe, lots of upgrades. I'll try to condense it all down. First of all, it's sitting on my original MDF top. I change it into a torsion box to support the weight and to kind of get rid of the flex and to bring it up to a more workable height. Cause now when I'm standing, it's, it's, it's better. It's, I don't have to bend down as much. Easier to see my work. Uh, next bit is it's sitting on a big plate of quartz. Uh, I wanted granite. My local granite shop just had an off cut of quartz they were willing to give me, so I took it. Um, and that gives us a nice reference level for building everything else on it. Um, it's very flat. It's probably, like, like, the best I can tell, it's more accurate than a thou over its, over its size, uh, which is perfect for my needs. Um, and it adds a lot of weight to the lathe, which helps reduce vibration and resonant frequency and all kinds of other stuff. Just bolting the lathe to the granite plate helped immensely. Um, as I shake everything, <laughs> uh, it increased the cut quality substantially. Um, the next step was to get rid of the tool post. I had my quick change tool post, which I designed and I quite like. Um, and it worked for all materials. Like majority of my pen work is in brass, uh, as you've seen. And uh, it's not a very trying material uh, to machine. It, it machines like cheese. It's very easy to work. Um, Recently, I've been doing some more work in stainless. Um, I've also done some work in titanium, and both those metals are a little more difficult to work with. Uh, and that's when I noticed that the tool would kind of nose down under some of my cuts, so I wanted to get rid of that and make the most rigid setup I could possibly think of. So, to make that rigid setup, I just took a piece of steel and shrunk fit, shrink fit, shrink fitted it into another block of steel and then bolted that to the cross slide. And that's about the simplest system I can make. And then I machined these out of aluminum. They have a little set screw here, hold my tooling, little clamping nut on the back, and they just sit on. I can adjust the angle should I need to. And uh, they work awesome. This is essentially like one piece. Once these tighten up, uh, they're going nowhere. I like that a lot. That made a massive difference in cut quality. Um, I used to have to take spring passes on stainless to kind of get to the size I want, and, and this just reduced it to nothing. Um, and I, I can make a bunch of them for, for all my tooling. I got boring bars and whatnot, so super easy to make and helped out immensely. The next step after all that was done was a way to accurately cut my threads. With this style lathe, there's no change gears, there's complicated systems that people have made in the past, but I figured the most simple system would be to use uh, electronic feedback to drive the screw or drive the carriage to whatever thread pitch I wanted. Um, so what I did is uh, now with the advent of relatively, uh, not advent, but with the decreasing price of good electronics, um, this one has a encoder, which I think is like a 4,000 step encoder, um, which can be up to like 8,000 steps. I'm probably screwing all these numbers up, but the encoder is coupled right to the headstock that feeds its signals right to the stepper. The stepper drives the lead screw and the lead screw drives the carriage in the most simple manner. We'll get into it in more detail, but that's how it works. So it analyzes the headstock. Uh, like I said, it, it's analyzing it like you know, thousands of times per rotation. So it's very accurate. You can turn it just by hand and it tracks the screw thread perfectly. And it lets me machine threads, which is something I wanted to do forever. Here we have a much better view of, of kind of what's going on to uh, let the Arduino, which is it's running off of, uh, analyze where the headstock is. So we have this 3D printed bushing. Uh, this is just like MXL, I think, uh, timing pulleys and then timing belt. Um, this one's coupled right into the back of the 5C closer. And then I put a couple pins inside here so this would stay rigid um, and that runs to a little bracket that's holding the encoder and the encoder is then feeding its signals down here to a uh, little styrene box that i made for the uh, i think it's an arduino nano and a breakout and oled board that i can put a menu on so i can do whatever i want i'll put a little cool picture of me hitting buttons on there those signals are driven to a stepper driver the stepper driver drives the stepper uh, the stepper's got a, there's a couple brackets on either side of the lathe. Um, this one has a thrust bearing so that it takes up all the thrust. This is a left-handed quarter inch lead screw, which is the same lead screw that's used throughout this whole lathe so that uh, even if I want to run it manually, there's still the 50 thou uh, advancement per full rotation. So I don't have to change my thinking. And I put it left hand so that it would still function like a manual lathe. Uh, technically with stepper control it doesn't care the computer doesn't care if it's right-handed or left-handed but but kurt cares because he's got that as muscle memory and he always messes stuff up that doesn't uh or that makes it easy to not mess up um and then the last little bit if that's still in frame which it kind of is um this is the little coupler that couples the carriage to the lead screw so normally when i'm machining manually 
I can have it decoupled uh, and just roll back and forth. And this is just this is your half nut, if uh, for lack of a better term, and or split nut. So then you just couple it right to the lead screw, push it in, uh, put this little knob on it so I can apply some tension to it. Now it's rigidly coupled. I have a little knob on this side too, so I can advance it manually should I want to, which is actually really good for cutting the threads on here. Um, and technically I could write a program, so it would do it. It's like a half CNC lathe, half manual lathe. Um, but like I said, its main purpose is threading. So I bring it basically up to my work, lock into position, blah, 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 set whatever kind of threads I want, hit the go button, and then these are locked. So then once this spins, this moves, and I will put some video so you don't have to listen to me talk about it. So I made the electronic component or electronic covers uh, from styrene. This is styrene plastic. 3D printing has its place. It's great for this kind of stuff. But sometimes for one-offs, this is the way to go. Uh, really popular in model making. I haven't messed with it. Honestly, I just kind of learned about it, like, I don't know, maybe a year ago. And uh, finally picked some up. And it's really enjoyable. It's it's uh, it's relaxing. Um, it's probably faster than 3D printing if you count the CAD time. So uh, I, I enjoyed making these little boxes for, uh, for all the electronics and, and controllers and whatnot. On to the machining. So I loaded up a piece of uh, titanium in the lathe because why not? This is a piece of 3 titanium, uh, grade 5, big boy stuff. And I'm just going to use my insert tool to uh, rough it down to size. We're going to make a 440 screw, uh, which is about, I think I can actually go down to 80 threads per inch. Uh, but my hand grinding skills for making uh, threading tools is just not good enough for, for that small yet. So 440 is as small as I'm going to need for my pen work. Uh, so I figured it'd be a good one to start with. I actually did a bunch of brass prior to this, but titanium is much more interesting to work with. So here you see, I'm turning it dry. Uh, I read horror stories on the internet of you'll burn your shop down and light on fire. And I actually tried to light some titanium on fire um, prior to this video. Um, and it's it's more difficult than you think. It burns well when it does, but it's actually a lot harder to, to light it up than, than you think it is. Uh, so I'm being pretty aggressive with the, uh, with the cuts here. Um, well, <laughs> pretty aggressive for this size of lathe. And we're just gonna kind of skip across from all the turning because uh, there's a lot of turning to bring it down to 440 size. Basically, I'm gonna make a shank and a head uh, and then we're gonna put some threads on it. So let's cut ahead to the little threading tool. Once again, hand ground, high speed steel, nothing too fancy. Here's that blank all prepped up. Six. Put my little threading tool on here. And the next little bit is basically just me getting the start of the thread where I want it to be. Um, zeroing all my axes, setting what thread pitch I want on the controller, um, touching off to the workpiece there, and then uh, prepping for the thread cut. Once once everything is set up and ready to go, I hit the lock button and that locks both systems together. And here you can see, I'm just turning the spindle by hand, uh, obviously a little faster speed, uh, and uh, the, the carriage is controlling itself back and forth. All I do is advance the cut, and such a, such a small piece, I'm, I'm only taking a few thou off per pass uh, just to avoid deflection. I can't even remember what I was cranking in. I think 5 thou per pass. So 10 thou radially or however you measure that. And we just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you get the uh, the thread pitch you want or the thread depth you want. There's like charts, I guess, to figure out thread root. Um, this was one of my first titanium screws, so I was kind of just... I had a rough idea of how much I'd have to turn down, but most of this is just, just eyeballing it, quite honestly. I wish I could say I had like a fancy thread gauge and I could tell you exactly what... I, I didn't know at the time. I was... I was just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. It's interesting. Very interesting to watch. I enjoy it. So I got it close, and then I basically just tapped a 440 hole into some brass. Just to kind of act as my thread gauge. And here, it's just a little bit too tight. And that's the nice thing. This system is still completely coupled, so I can move the carriage out of the way. And as long as I remember where it was advanced to, I can go right back to it. Um, back and forth, back and forth. There's, there's basically no slop in my uh, little half nut so it, it works well i still i like, go past the work and then come into it to eat up any back backlash if there was any and a few more passes and we got something that's uh, acceptable maybe not perfect but uh it feels really nice and it's a nice tight fit uh so now we got to finish off this little this little uh screw next thing to do is basically uh edge break it i just want to take the uh, front off where the little burr was raised so we just take a little chamfering tool round off the front of that or chamfer the front of the thread and then we're going to take a parting tool and we're just going to part off the rest of the little screw once again this is where that rigid tool post came in super handy is parting operations just it's night and day flexibility just does not work with with parting but nice rigid setup awesome and the last little bit once i got this screw made uh, i wanted to figure out a way to put a hex or put a head into it 
Ideally, I want to mill uh, ahead into it, but uh, that's, that's not in the cards right now. So I use my mill and a very tiny ground piece of carbide to uh, essentially cut a slot. It's out of focus because manually focused camera. And I focused before I moved the work. Um, but it works well. I just basically inch down and jog back and forth and let the tool uh, kind of shaper cut its way uh, down to the titanium and make me a slot drive for a, uh, for a slotted driver. Fancy. And after grinding my screwdriver down a little bit so it would actually fit this itty bitty slot I made, uh, it works well. The thread fitment in that 440 tapped hole is uh, is quite tight. It's it's nicely tight. Uh, about what I would uh, about what I was searching for when I started this whole project. So I'm incredibly happy. And uh, now the fun parts of like anodizing and more titanium machining and all the good stuff. So that'll come up next, along with the shop tour relocation and. Thanks for watching. See you next time.